Andy, the search uh, for something that works in the power play continues maybe at practice day. What did you like about uh, the, the different look, I guess, today? Uh, it, you know, uh, when you make uh, adjustments to uh, power play units, to top offensive units, uh, you try to do it in the mind the set that you're going to stimulate something a little different. And that's all that we're, we're trying to do. It doesn't say it's cast in stone. Uh, we just think that there are options available to us and we bang our heads ar around the uh, desk this morning and felt that this is what we'd come up with yesterday. We, didn't, we decided not to practice uh, special teams, so today was, uh, was what we were, our focus was for part of the practice. I don't recall uh, you ever having a forward here on the point on the power play. What do you like about that look? Well, that's Steve Spot's fault. Well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but what, do, what do you like about that? No, like, again, I think I think what you you look at it, and, and we we'd taken as off the power play uh, in the previous game, and hopefully that stimulates uh, his uh, competitive juices that he's going to you know defy us and go out and make a contribution because the mindset with this is is that we have possibly our top five offensive players on the ice. So, uh, because in a lot of situations, uh, you only get the one opportunity with a face off and you might get the minute and 10 or minute and 30 seconds with the one unit and then the, the second unit only gets 30 seconds of it. But when we play the competition game in, within themselves today, the red team outscored the white team. So now I have the option of starting them tomorrow night to force that competition. So again, those are the things, the little games that are taking place within the, the practice that we try to, to force your players to compete harder in, in practice so that they earn an opportunity to start first in the game. Maz earned maybe a, a, another look on the power play just because of how he played against Pittsburgh. And what have you liked about his five on five? I, I think Nazi, it, it, in a nutshell, it, it has to be a physical player in the, the right situations. I don't think you can expect Nazi to be a big bruising type of player, but I think when the situation presents itself that he's got to be involved physically, he's got to continue to skate through the neutral ice because he's a guy that loves to play east-west in the neutral ice and the game has gone to north-south and backside pressure. When he's not playing well, the opposition backside pressure is having an effect on his ability to carry the puck. Got five games at home. Three games coming up. Uh, is playing better at home. Much a state of mind as anything else. Uh, you know, I, again, we, we've uh, in order to be a, a, a team that uh, gives your sense, yourself a chance to qualify for playoffs, you have to have a strong home record. I don't care. You look at all the teams. Uh, you have to give yourself a chance by by winning your fair share of games at home. We know that uh, the schedule is going to get road weary here over the Christmas season we're going to play lots of games on the road so yeah, it's our opportunity for us to get our team playing to a high level at home and i would say we have not accomplished that this year yet that challenge in toronto is, is greater than other teams though would you agree uh, i think there's too much made of it and then when you continue to talk about it it fo focuses on the negative i know as a coach coming in here we had the same mandate, we, we do the same thing, we talk to your team, get on them, put the puck in, pressure them, their fans will take a negative approach if they're not executing, if they're not, if they're hemmed in their zone, all those things. So I'm, I know firsthand what's going on in the opposition's dressing room. So what we have to do as a group is we have to simplify and, and focus on what we talked about, the process and the playing the right way and starting with the puck and not, pay, not be so um, adamant about playing the rush game and play more of the grind game, you know, and talk about being first and first, first power play, uh, first scoring chance, first body check, win the first face off. If you can do those, uh, those things and have that checklist available and readily available for your players and they can accomplish that, it really improves your chances. Is as much of this club's depth reflective on four or five players who could fit in anywhere, be it second, third or fourth line, Randy? Yeah, and I think especially since the emergence of uh, Komarov and Santorelli, you know, and, and both those players, we would not have penciled in at the beginning of the year to be, you know, top six forwards or top offensive players. 
but uh, in reality, those players have come in and, and earned their opportunity to get more minutes, and they will continue to get more if they continue to play at the level that they're playing at. And some of our so-called higher level players had better beware. Randy, what have you seen from, from the top line, the JVR, Bozak, Kessel line? Uh, Phil was saying it hasn't been a great stretch for them. Where can they be better, I guess? I just think they have to work as three guys. I see Bozak as, as playing possibly a couple of his strongest games. And I think that, uh, that there's got to be more support on the puck. Got to be harder to play against. Can't be the one and out and play with structure in the neutral ice. They'll get a lot more pucks back. Cozen on the mend with the conditioning stint. Yeah, Cozen's gone to the Marlies to play uh, some games. Uh, we have up to five games of an opportunity to leave him there. We'll do an assessment after. I think he plays tomorrow night and Sunday and then Tuesday, and then we'll reassess where we're at with our lineup and how well he's played down there. Randy, uh, last week, last Friday, it was a little busier here. How much has the mood changed, do you feel, around the team in just one short week? Well, it's a dramatic change, but you can't, uh, you, you can't hide from the fact that uh, what happened in our own building and our, the loss to Buffalo was pretty demoralizing to our group, and it put a lot of pressure on everybody involved. But you feel like... It's, well, it's, it's lightened considerably. To me, I, I, it's lightened considerably because uh, we responded with more of a workmanlike attitude. But in this market, you better be prepared to roll with the punches. For the upcoming hometown hockey, Randy, what can you say about the hockey community of Azilv and just what it meant to you? Yeah, yeah. I, they were asked me about yeah. uh, my hockey group background. And the funny thing is, is I never played on indoor ice till I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. Played on outdoor playground hockey, played traveling team hockey. Uh, and visited in tournaments. Yes, I played in indoor ice, but as far as a home rink, it was all outdoors. And uh, my father was one of the uh, caretakers of the Plateau Gay or outdoor, wouldn't be even a community center, it was a rink. And uh, we pumped the water from the creek beside it. So the water, uh, the, the ice was not very white, as per se. It was, <laughs> it was pretty sandy, but it didn't matter to us. You know, when you're a kid, you play and you play all day. and. I can remember skating in the fields when they had ice storms and when they, uh, um, the farmers had cabbage fields. We used to use the cabbage heads for, for nets. It was ball hockey, ball hockey, ice hockey. And then w in the spring, we went and played soccer and played baseball. Whereas now kids play different, don't play different sports. We played all the sports and we were, we were well-rounded in a lot of them. Uh, we thought we were good in every one of them, but <laughs> as time went on, <laughs> we, they proved to ourselves we weren't very good at it, a lot of them. But we played them and we had fun and we grew up rural route, grew up in a community that was probably 2,500 people. There was no paved, uh, paved roads, it was gravel roads and ditches and, and much, much the same today. You know, that's, that's the way you grow up in, in rural Ontario and growing up a Toronto Maple Leaf fan because they only had two channels. You were either Montreal Canadian fan or a Toronto Maple Leaf fan because you had CBC French and CBC English. Simple as that.